props are for beautiful faces. Okay, though. we're recording now. <laughs> good. My face looks terrible, so it's a good thing it's recording only. Oh, oh. shut your beautiful face. Oh, no. Stop it. I didn't put my face on today. No need. You are gorgeous. <laughs> you, girl. <laughs> Um, no, what we, we were saying when you were um, cutting out that w at some point that shall be us when we all meet finally in person. Yes. Well, Leaky, or GeekyCon is in July, end of July, and MegaCon Tampa is in October. Just saying. I shall think on Tampa. I saw Laura may, might be trying to work that one as well. So... I shall, I shall, I shall ponder that. And good people. Yes. We shall see. I keep biting off more than I can chew. <laughs> <laughs> That's happened. Yeah. There's just so, so many cops now. Yeah. Kind of I know. Cool. It's out of control. I tried to make like a spreadsheet schedule and I was like, screw it. There's so many. I'm just going to pick the ones near me for now. <laughs> Although Dragon Con's not too far away, so I could go up to Atlanta. Yeah, Haley Haley asked if, if I could come up to for Dragon Con with her, but she was deciding between Dragon Con and Heroes and Villains. Mm. I think that's going to happen, like, one's in September and one's in October or something like that. I've never been but, to um, Yeah, I don't think we're big enough to apply for press for Dragon Con, and I'm not sure if I can swing that one, because there's an... Texas has way too many cons, and I think there's one in August, so that might be cutting it too close. Mm. So, but Rach, how was um, Bandcamp? If you want to touch on that for a little bit, um, Bandcamp was awesome. Not so awesome for Jean's wallet, but it was awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, because we we well, I say we. She bought a lot of stuff. <laughs> Um, it's really nice because it's one of the few all curated, predominantly original comic art, Ooh. and a lot of it was Canadian, which was really nice, um, as well as um, everyone on the West Coast, so Oregon, Washington, California. Um, but yeah, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we got to interview Lynn Johnston, which will be going up tomorrow who was the cartoonist for for better or for worse and it was like childhood hero kind of like oh my god it's really you and you're talking to us she actually when, when i posted she actually wanted to like interview us like ask us questions because she was like you guys spend all this time asking me questions i want to ask you questions and they were like what <laughs> <laughs> like why um, she was so sweet, so lovely. Um, and we listened to her panel as well, which was mo moderated by Doug Savage, who is a cartoonist, like an amazing cartoonist in his own right. Super fun to meet him. Um, and then we sat in on a live podcast recording for, um, a podcast called The Sneaky Dragon, which was super fun, and they had a couple guests. One was a, like, Lucy Bellwood um, draws comics, but she draws them from her background, so she's, like, she learned how to sail, and, like, she lived on a tall ship for a while, and it was really cool, so got to talk to her for a bit. And um, a cartoonist that did work on the Futurama and Simpsons cartoon uh, comic series and stuff like that. So yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty fun. Really awesome meeting local talent and talking to the organizers. Yeah. Can't wait for next year. And it's a free event for for the public. So that's awesome. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. More fun than I did some of the bigger conventions that I that I've attended and this was quite busy like so yeah I had a good time. you get a more personal experience at smaller cons because you have you know you could have more one-on-ones with the artists and I think uh, mega cons definitely smaller than New York Comic Con but you still like are in the swarm 
Whereas when I went to BookCon the first year, it was so tiny, and I met, like, a bunch of vendors that I've been fans of, and I was like, this is so much fun! <laughs> <laughs> like, such a different con experience. It's sort of like what Zach wants Nerd HQ to be and how it's been. Um, but the bigger they get, the less personal you ha- just have, the nature of the beast. The bigger they get, that's it, you know? Indeed. What was your favorite part of Megacon? Um, I, so I usually go to cons alone. <laughs> um, that's just how I roll. Um, or meet up with people, but then break up, break apart and do our own things. I, I love doing panels. So I do a lot of panels usually throughout the day. Um, so it was just fun to like go with the girls and like walk up and down and look at the art and just keep talk all day. And, um, actually Karen, uh, her blog is Karen nerds out. Um, she's delightful. You should all be nerd friends with her cause she's so fun. Um, she. Uh oh. Oh. You froze. Did we lose him? I think so. Please come back. Come back to us, baby. Stumble come back from the light. Uh oh no. I don't think she knows that she froze on us. Oh I don't no. Think so either. She's probably still talking. <laughs> I did that once with Janine. I was on the phone with her, and then about 15 minutes later, I realized that my phone was dead and I was talking to myself for like a good 15 minutes. That always happens to me with my best friend, too. And it's always when I'm like in the middle of giving her really great advice that she doesn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Janet, please come back. Hmm. Yeah, speaking of, um, speaking of Doug... We told him that we might want to be interested, because we wanted to interview him as well, but we didn't get a chance to because he was busy and we were all busy. But um, we're probably going to message him and see if we can interview him. Nice. Sounds good. He's a cool comic dude. <laughs> I need to schedule the the call with uh, Nerdist Mom, but... Yeah, I feel like that one's... We, we're going to need some prep. Mm-hmm. We need to do, like, a dress rehearsal. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, like, we're, it, it, we're gonna need prep, but also, like, it, it, can't, it just can't be the summer, like, yeah, with all the like, traveling and the cons and stuff, like, there's just no way, and then she has the wedding in August. Yeah. So it's gonna have to be in the fall. Yeah. That's fine. Oh my god, the wedding is in August. Yep. Unless, I can ask her if we can do the interview in person, that, when we're in California. That would be sweet. Uh, Liz says, serious technical difficulties, girls, there's a storm brewing down here and my connection is really bad, but apparently tweets are getting through. Interesting. Yeah, because Twitter is just like, beep, beep, and it's okay, but anything extensive, like a live stream, one-on-one video. <laughs> For real. Um... Tweet her back, Jams, and let her know that that's okay, and tell her to jump on whenever she can, and um, if not, then we'll just have her on later, and to stay safe with the storm and such. Okay, let's see. Uh, let me pause the recording. Okay. Back to re- back to the recording. Okay. <laughs> Jamie would have a cat on her head. I would, too. He'd be orange, and he'd be, like, sucking on my hair. What the what? <laughs> That's what Bob does when I take a shower. He's, like, obsessed with my wet hair. <laughs> That's hilarious. Bob is a cat, by the way, nerd. Bob yeah. is a cat. <laughs> Bob is a cat. He thinks he's my husband. Okay, we should probably do an intro, yeah? <laughs> sure, let's do an intro ten minutes later. This is how we roll. <laughs> uh, welcome to another non-podcast podcast slash uh, nerdy views. Um, the whole point of today was to talk about season finales of various nerdy shows. And another reason why not to have oranges when you're doing a podcast. <laughs> I've got stuff in my teeth and now it's hard to talk. But anyway, um... We were going to have the lovely Michelle from Nerdy Gras join us, but um, she was stuck in an emergency at um, her vet's office. Uh, 
but the fur baby that she was treating is okay. So, um, she's okay for the fur baby. Um, Miss Laura was also going to join us, but she wasn't feeling well yesterday, and she worked MegaCon all weekend and did about 13 or 16 hours of interpreting. So... Send her all the love and props for her hard work and dedication, because she's awesome. Speaking of... So she may have a con crud, con crud. so we want her to recoup, because um, she has Dallas uh, Fan Expo this weekend. So, um, get well, Laura. And uh, granted, this is probably not posting for another couple of weeks, so I don't even know why I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm hoping she's better by then. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. So we were also talking to Liz, and uh, we may keep a little bit of the convo that we were having with her, but she cut off because there's a storm brewing in Florida. So she was having technical difficulties. So since this is now, it just doesn't want to happen. Yeah, exactly. Since (laughs) it's going so well, (laughs) we're just gonna we're gonna talk about the shows. And um, some uh, other convention experiences, because Rachel talked about BAMCAP, and Liz got to talk a little bit about uh, Megacon, even though she got cut off. (laughs) And um, uh, what did we say? We mentioned that it was 50 days until Until Nerd HQ. Nerd HQ, yep. And we're all super excited. Jamie's doing her best Hawaiian girl. (laughs) (laughs) Um, By the way, we weren't sure whether to do a video recording or just audio. And Jamie's looking super hot and we just want everyone to know it. (laughs) Oh, stop. (laughs) We need a screen cap. We need a screen cap of how hot Jamie looks. (laughs) Did you get it? Oh, am I supposed to screen cap myself? (laughs) (laughs) That doesn't sound vain in any way, shape, or form. There, I think I got that. (laughs) (laughs) It's gonna be the cover of our, of our, (laughs) of our post. (laughs) Oh, Lordy. Like, nerds, listen to Nerds Are Us and imagine what, how hot Jamie looks. (laughs) You're gonna make me the same color as my curtains. <laughs> I'm seriously still waiting for Rich to come home and like wonder what it is we do. I really just want him to walk in and just be like, What is happening? <laughs> he usually has that kind of look on his face. Like, what is even going on right now? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Dallas Fan Expo is happening this weekend, and I am planning to attend, but it seems that Mother Nature has other plans. Um, we will see what happens, because there are some mega storms brewing, and of course they have to be traveling through Texas. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So, if only Dallas wasn't four and a half hours away. <laughs> um, by the time this post, we'll know if you made it to do Yeah. This is true. This is true. <laughs> so, yes. Fan Expo Dallas happens, when is it? June 3rd? 4th? Yes? Sure. 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 Um... We are recording this May 31st, for everyone's reference. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so since it's May 31st and Memorial Weekend just happened, I attended Space City Con here in Houston. And I'm still in the process of trying to figure out how to write about said con. Because a lot of shit went down. 
Mm-hmm. And um, for the most part, I have to say my personal experience was positive. For the most part. It was a rough start um, for me. But due to some delays and some technical stuff. But that could just be, you know, um, blamed on general lack of organization type things. Um, Some bigger stuff went down that I heard from some blog friends of ours and some other articles that were posted about stolen monies and the talent not being paid for coming to the con and other things. Um, There's about 160 people who have joined a Facebook group saying that their VIP passes were not authenticated, basically, and they lost that money and they haven't been refunded yet. So there's quite a bit of drama going on down here, and we haven't had any word, official word, from the convention and the organizers, and there needs to be. So I'm hoping by the time this posts that something has already been released and with some sort of explanation, apology, and direction as far as to how to get these people their money back. It's an embarrassment and leaves a really bad taste in people's mouths on Houston. And it's not even the city's fault because this con has nothing to do with the convention bureau. So... I just hope that all of this gets rectified and um, either this con ceases to happen or it continues to happen, but in the right way. So we'll see what happens next year. But um, I'll write more about it in our review. Um, I'll most likely try to finish that up tonight after we finish recording. So um, on a lighter note, Liz is back. Yay! <laughs> I can hear the storm, so it's probably wise if I lose you again. That's okay. That will be. (laughs) We understand. You were talking about Karen, though. Yes, and then the three of you froze, and it was the creepiest thing. (laughs) Yeah, you you froze. You had this face. You're like. I was like, I probably froze, but you guys are frozen, and it's so weird. And I was talking to nobody. (laughs) Um. Yes. Karen nerds out, blogger, don't lose me on this one, um, she bought a photo op with John Barrowman, so you could get three friends to go with you, and I never do, like, photo ops or autographs or anything, just because I never think about it, um, and so she took, she let the three of us come take the picture with her, and it was so cute, it was, like, the four of us, and then our best friend John Barrowman in the picture. (laughs) Hi, John, fancy meeting you in our photo near our faces, so... Um, that was fun, and then we went to his Q and A, which he is funny and delightful. And yes, so it was really fun. Karen brought cupcakes. It was it was lovely nice. to have friends at the con. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm such a solo like person. Like if I don't have anyone to go, like I'll go by myself. Who cares? Um, so it was nice to have them go. So. It was, uh, girly to nerdy from uh, Danielle is her name, and then oh hey Jess, and her name is Jess, and then Karen nerds out, um, and her name is Karen. So nice, yeah. They're all they're all on Twitter. Yeah, awesome. We will look. We shall do some talking. I mean finding. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice. talking. yeah they're fun. We all picked a, a, a good person to get a photo op with, too, because John Barrowman is hilarious. Mm-hmm. I know. Well, she had um, she had an op with Lena Headey from Game of Thrones, but she canceled at the last minute. So then we were, like, going to do John Cusack. But then we were, like, I, don't, I mean, I love John Cusack, but I, first of all, don't know what his nerd cred is. I don't know, like, what he was at the con for. Does anyone know? I don't know, because he's going to Dallas, too, and I'm not sure what he did recently that... Because at, at Dallas, it's going to be John and Joan Cusack. Oh, that's fine. And um, Joan did a voiceover for something recently. 
So I think that was her cred. But I'm not sure what John did. It might have been a vo- voiceover as well. I'm sure he's done something recently. But And I love him. So it, if, if he never did anything recently again, it wouldn't matter because I love him from everything he's done. But I was thinking, like, he, he's so much more, like, romantic comedy cred than, like, geek cred. So I was like... And Karen was like, I like him, but do I want a photo op with him? And then we saw the John Barrowman, and we were like, oh, well, forget it. We're doing that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he was delightful and fun. So. Yeah. yeah um, there's also uh, Anastasia cred for John Cusack. That's true. And I do love me some Anastasia. Yes. In the dark of the night. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh no! I think we lost your visual, Rach. Yeah. Uh oh. It happens. Rach, where did you go, Rach? I don't know where I went. Rachel. <laughs> He's in a new film with Sam Jackson. Oh really? Yeah, I was just looking it's up the Stephen see. King. It's a Stephen King film. Oh, okay. Is it Dark Tower? A cell. Is that what you're saying? Yes. It's Sal. Oh, 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 I was like, if it's Dark Tower, let's look out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I'm just looking at Wikipedia right now. I'm like, what's his nerd cred? <laughs> I mean, again, he doesn't need nerd cred to be anywhere. Be lovely. I love him. But, like, I just, like, yeah. what a random thing. He was, like, sandwiched between Stan Lee and, like, the Weasley brothers. And I was like, <laughs> doesn't him. Please don't. I don't. Whatever. Doesn't compute. <laughs> I'm like whatever. I'll hug him. <laughs> yeah. He's helpful. Sure. Say anything. Hello. You know, best movie ever. Well, no, but <laughs> one of the best. Like that's it for me. Like done. Indeed. I'm still oh. waiting for someone to like stand my lawn with a with a stereo over their head. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I hear music. I'll be right back. <laughs> and it kind of funny, but whatever. It would probably be an iPod now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be like this. It'd be... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> also love him from Must Love Dog. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I love Serendipity. I love Serendipity. Yeah, Serendipity. And in America's VRs, which is not a great one, but it's fine. It's still good. He's still good. <laughs> I would have taken a picture with him in a heartbeat. I think I was the oldest out of the four of us, though, so. <laughs> I was only, like, around in the 80s. <laughs> I think I'm the oldest out of the four of us here, too, so. No, I think we're the same. I'm Are we? Sure. Oh, good. We yeah, both so was the last time, I think. I was born 82. Yeah. yeah. So. 82. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so well, let's get started with the tea stuff, and... We were going to do Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. first so Miss Liz can comment on it. And we don't want to spoil any other shows because that was the show that she said she was caught up on. It's the so, only one. I've been so... I've been... This is my problem. If I miss, like, two or three and then I'm behind in the whole rotation, then it just, like, it, it loses me. And Hulu's been doing, like, a weird thing where it was playing, like, episode 12 and then skipped to episode, like, 18. And I was like, what the... Like, can't catch up! So... Weird. It completely lost me. Um, I did the same to my mom. My mom and I were like, nah! <laughs> no! We look the same. <laughs> it's like, some of this. It's like, no! I know! Oh, yeah! Like, that. <laughs> um, it's the same face. <laughs> um, what other shows were you were you watching before you... I watched Arrow. I watched Flash. I lost Supergirl in there. And I watched Once Upon a Time, but I lost that one a while ago, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think right before winter break, or when winter break came back, I just forgot that it came back and then missed it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what else? Supernatural, I don't watch. Although I know I would love it, but I'm like 10 years behind, so. Yeah, that's hard to catch up on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a life commitment now, uh, which I'm fully willing to take on. But right now I'm watching Baby Daddy. Anyone? What? What's that? What? It's. BBC Family Adorable show that I love. It's so cute. With um, Jean-Luc Bilodeau and, like, Melissa... Uh, Megan... Well, I forget her name. Melissa Peterson plays the mom. It's so cute. Like, the dad... 
the baby gets left on the doorstep and the dad's like a dude and he's got roommates and a brother and it's cute. Oh. It's adorable. I love ABC Family Show. Or now Freeform. Oh, that's right. It's Freeform mm-hmm. now. I was forgetting about that. And now Girl Meets World is coming back this week. Oh, that's right. It does this week? I think this week, yeah. Okay. My, my, uh, my two my best friends were blowing me up today. It's like, it's coming back. I think it said in two days. I really enjoy that show. It's not getting as much hype as it deserves, but I really enjoy that show. All of the nostalgia with, you know, all the original characters and stuff, like, it's a really good show. I love that show. So anyways, I've been busy with, like, catching up on other ones, so I need to dive back in, but that's what the summer's for, so. Yeah. But S.H.I.E.L.D., S.H.I.E.L.D. I am caught up on. Awesome. So, um, Rach, did you watch anything? I'm here for moral support. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so behind on television since my since uh, we 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 uh, canceled cable like I don't know two years ago. <laughs> so that'll do it. Um, the only show that I'm like semi, well, I'm still like behind on that one too. Of, of two episodes. Yeah. Girl, I'm, I'm just. What? I'm terrible. I just, I can't. It's called The Catch. Has anyone heard of it? Oh, yeah. And, um. Wonderland, hello. <laughs> another <laughs> scandal. Scandal. I know, right? But, um, but yeah, it's actually really good because my cousin and I caught the kind of teaser before it, before it started airing. And I was like, oh, this is going to be so dumb because, like, once he gets caught, that's it. The show's over. But then I watched the first episode, and then the second episode, and I'm like, oh my god, this is actually really good. <laughs> I got so good. So. And my heart was broken with Grey's Anatomy, so I don't know if I can trust her anymore. <laughs> my heart's broken on Scandal, I'll tell you that much. She knows how to rip it out and eat it for breakfast. Yeah, so I don't know I don't know if I want to get too invested, but it's too late. It's too late! <laughs> She's got, like, two other shows that are going to come out, too. Oh, she has that Romeo and Juliet one. Yeah, married one. That one looks really good. I love she it. owns ABC. Like, I feel like every show is her. <laughs> and rightly so. I mean, that woman knows how to write. She knows how to... Yeah, she does. And she writes she knows how to show run. Like, oh, she's wonderful. Yeah, she's fantastic. And she's, you know, they actually let her, like, diversify. I so, want Olivia Pope so bad. Yeah. It's a thing. <laughs> For sure. So I'm caught up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not caught up on anything. I, I, need, I need to get six months off so that I can watch television. Yeah, I've decided it's vacation great. and TV is the best thing ever, and everything else is, like, wasting my time, so. <laughs> Got to read. We all boycott. <laughs> Life. Um, Thanks for talking okay. for the next episode. I'm up on my television. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let us know if we, like, go too long on time, if you don't mind being timekeeper. Uh, basically, if it gets to be, like, 10 o'clock, just tell us to shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, looking at my, I'm looking at my clock right now. It's 5.23. Pacific. Yeah. So hopefully we don't run past my dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, that's, that's our goal. That's the goal. Okay. So, Jams. Yeah. I don't watch it. You do not. I do not. Oh my god, what the hell? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, (laughs) I've tried so many times. I'm here. (laughs) I'm just holding on the agent talk to you about it. Let me think. Um, I know nothing about this show other than... Yep, I know nothing. (laughs) Yeah, Rich watches it. I've tried so many times to get into it, and I just can't for some reason. Well, it's because season one is slow and takes a long time, and the expectation was so high that if you didn't, like, just sit there and be like, I don't care, it's Marvel, I'm watching it, then Mm -hmm. it was easy to lose. So, a lot, that's what a lot of people lost it. And then when Winter Soldier hit, it picked up and got really really good season two was sort of like in and out and then i think they like they go back and forth they really go back and forth so yeah it's like it it's so it's like any weed show though really like even though it's not joss 
it's tell. Dope. Buffy is uh, for me, but all seven of Buffy, I love. Like I can go the whole time. There are like episodes here and there, but the arcs itself are strong. So um, that that to me sets Buffy apart. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, have, I had a couple Buffy. seasons of Buffy where like like there was the one half season where like the whole. Um, like, after she got brought back, was which was just weird, because, like, the main villains were, like, those college friends. And that's my favorite season of all, because it's so different than Formula. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's my favorite. You no, know, like, like, after it, like, they explained everything that happened, like, it was just like, oh, that's really cool, but it was still one of those, like, where, like, they almost lost me, like, I almost stopped watching it. But yeah. I kept going going with it just because like i had watched all the seasons before so it was just kind of like one of those decisions you make where it's like yep i'm gonna commit to it and i'm gonna watch it um but yeah i came like i came this close (laughs) i love it mainly because of spike but you know yes the last season was my least favorite i know season seven is good too that one invisibility episode though (laughs) uh yeah I was out of control. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that whole show so much. I need to rewatch that. Although I've watched it like 17 times, but what's an other time? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, boss. Anyway. Field. <laughs> I like Liz's logic. Yep. Yeah. That's how my logic works. But yeah, so like, I feel like it has these ebbs and flows where it's really strong and then it'll like, you'll be like, okay. Well, like, for example, uh, Bobby and and Hunter, Mm -hmm. um, their whole arc and them leaving, preparing for Marvel's Most Wanted, and now Marvel's Most Wanted is canceled, so, like, praying that they bring them back because they were such strong characters and finding a way to write them back in because that would be sad because they were great. And I think they added so much to the show. Um, So losing them was sort of like, it went, it lost a little something because they were so strong. Yeah. It was interesting, too, their dynamic, because I feel like they made each other strong. Like, I think Bobby's character was probably even a little bit more strong and more oh, yeah. pulled out and more mysterious even than Hunter's. Yeah. Oh, and her. I, I want to be here. Like, I, I need a quiz. I am her. Like, <laughs> I, those quizzes are my life. That's me. <laughs> um, basically going to go be a vigilante now. See you later. Um, <laughs> Stay but, safe, Evan. <laughs> of course, because I will be on the streets kicking back. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I hope that that happens because that would be upsetting if they just lost them because of all the stuff. You know, yeah. that is unfortunate. They kind of like got done dirty because it was just like it was almost like a guarantee for a second there, and then oh, yeah. like, nope, we're not doing it anymore. It was so weird. Yeah, networks are like that though. They I know with your heart. I hope Netflix will pick up Agent Carter, too. That's the other sad. Not with Haley signed on for... I know. Eviction. It just, it's not happening, which... Eviction looks so cute, but I, I like, sort of don't want to watch it because I want her to be Agent Carter. Yeah. Well, she did, they did have an announcement, um, or someone reported that at her Megacon panel, she did say that she was willing to do whatever it takes to get Peggy back. I could see her doing it. So... Um, Although- going to be at abc and then if if it gets sold to netflix and you've got conflicting networks versus streaming and like that's a drama but whatever anyways agents of shield agents of shield (laughs) forward (laughs) i have a beef with agents of shield finale because they were hyping that somebody was going to die hyping Mm -hmm. hyping one of the team and then it we're allowed to spoil it, right? Because we're talking about it here. Yeah. Okay. And then it was, and then it was freaking, um, what's his face? In, you know, instead Lincoln. of anyone else. Which one? Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah. No one cares. No one cares about him. And, <laughs> and like, I'm sorry, like, nobody cares that he died. No, everyone's like, oh, out of everybody, Lincoln. Nobody cares. And they completely brushed past the fact that that Grant is a better character that we all cared about and definitely didn't want to see that happen to even as high. And then was like, Lincoln is the one? No, no one cares about Lincoln. <laughs> Who cares about Lincoln? Raise your hand. Oh, nobody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so I am really glad that I picked you to come on yes. because no one else that I've spoken to about this agrees with me. You're the first person that agrees with me. Where like they totally took the safe way out. And they kept all of these advertisements. They were showing May and Chloe and you know, Clark and everyone, and then they choose the last guy that they basically added to the team who just basically got approved to be on the team like two, three weeks before. Nobody cares about him. <laughs> and he was a whiny baby. I didn't really like him as a character, I'm but whatever. I I was okay with him as a character. Like I didn't I I didn't not care about him as a character. I don't care about his death as a character because he wasn't as strong as the other ones. You know, like, you've ruined all that you've built to try to make him important by killing him off this soon into his art. If right. it had been someone else, it would have been really, really powerful. And because it was him, you were like, okay, I just started to like him, and now he's gone? Like, I don't care. You know? Yeah. And, like, to make that the big death rather than Hive dying slash Grant and him exiting the show when he, you know, Brett, um, Brett Dalton deserved, like, a bigger exit having his exit be the thing, not him and the other dude. It was very cute, and who cares? Nobody cares. Um, so that, that to me, I was like, you pulled your punch on that, because you were really building, and it being a Josh show, you sort of expect that a big death means a big death, because we know from other shows that he's not afraid of that, and he's not afraid, and I know he's, he's executive producing, so I'm sure he's not writing as much, and I'm sure he's not as involved as he was, but, like, that expectation is still there, so I still think of him as involved. And because of that, I have a higher expectation of what that, the emotional investment. And and I think S.H.I.E.L.D. consistently save for that episode, the Spies Goodbye episode. The, the show pulls its punches with the emotion because you have your core. Right. And you know they're not going to die, except for what's-his-face that died last season. But even he was sort of peripheral, and I liked him, but I was like, right. You know, yeah. Um, so, but I mean, I think they set up next season interestingly, where everybody's fractured, and I think that like that sets up some interesting things. And Chloe being like full on Quake now is really interesting to me. Yeah, so, I think they have a lot they could do. And with everybody fractured, I think that they could easily Lance and Hunter could easily transfer back in with that dynamic. But I just thought I was like, okay, like. So is it official, like, Brett is out altogether? I'm pretty sure he is. I don't know if it's official or not, but it felt official from the show, you know? Yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure if they are gonna were going to try to work him back in in another way, in some weird way. I think the way the fans uh, reacted on his Twitter made it seem like he wasn't coming back. And, like, his thanking everybody sort of stuff, uh, it just felt like it was permanent, so... You know, he was the stuff that was, like, so great to work with the team or whatever. And I was like, oh, I think this is legit. Um, but I hated how his whole storyline ended up anyways with him becoming Hive. And I thought that Brett, like, I thought Grant deserved a better storyline of maybe redemption or, you know, not just being, like, murdered on a planet and taking body snatched. And, like, I just was like, I like, I am all about creators doing their thing and writing the story and it being of their mind and not my mind because I'm not the writer and I wouldn't be able to think of what they're thinking and they're brilliant, you know? But, like, I just was like, eh, I don't know. It doesn't capture me. So, But I'm still invested in it. It doesn't matter. I'll watch it next season. But right. It could. I just thought it could have been Grant deserved more, Lincoln deserved a longer thing and not to, you know, cut Grant's death off. So, I don't know. Yeah. I was torn. I kept going back and forth because I, for Grant, I, when he died on that planet and when Coulson killed him, I was like, I remember like because I was so invested in Fitzsimmons at that oh, point. Yeah, love that. Where, yeah, like, okay with them though. <laughs> yeah, like where like the portal was open and Fitz was just trying to get through the damn thing, and these two fuckers are just like fighting. And, like, I just got super frustrated, and I was just like, just kill him already! Just kill him! And, like, when he, like, had him on the ground, 
And I was like, okay, this is finally going to be done. I thought he was going to, like, shoot him or something. <laughs> but when he squashed his chest, I remember I had that, um, oh, I didn't think he was going to take it like that. <laughs> it's so, like, ah. Oh. Yeah, so I was, like, I was torn because I was like, well, I wanted him to kill him, and I'm kind of glad he did, but <laughs> that was a bit, that was a bit much, and then, yeah, and I was like, I'm going to miss Grant, and then, like, they had the whole thing with Hive, so I'm glad they got another season out of him somehow, but still, I was just, I, I think they could have gone further with it. Yeah, I agree, and yeah. I also think they didn't really deal with the repercussions of, Colson right. out cold blood and murdering him. I mean, I know they did it, they touched on it a little bit, but I feel like Colson's arc has gotten if you look go back to Avengers and then watch him now, he's so much darker and they haven't even like talked about that, you know. I also thought that the um Civil War crossover was gonna be a lot more prominent than it was, and it really wasn't. Yeah. And I think I think a lot of that has to do too with the fact that that they've been so focused on the inhuman stuff and now that inhumans is off the schedule for the MCU I think that's affecting a lot of the decisions that they made for the later, latter part of this season because mm-hmm. it almost seemed like they were trying to wrap up things really quickly it also and uh, feels you know. like Kevin and like Marvel Studios and Pearl Motor Mutter or whatever his name is and ABC like, are not on the same page, which everybody says that they're not. When you read articles about it, they are, like, not on the same page. So, and you and it felt that way, whereas when the Winter Soldier crossover was, like, so, what? like, so in sync, and it really built the show up, but it also gave depth to the movie and was, like, this beautiful, like, seamless crossover, whereas this really, it was, like, they were, like, hey, we're, we're here, too. Oh, we... A, a Sokovia Accords, we're, we gotta sign those. Okay, let, give us the paperwork. You know, like, that's how it felt. And that's pretty much what it was, yeah. That's it was like, was. okay, nobody cares. Something else that I was really disappointed in was um, the use of Lash. Like, once Lash is, like, fully Lash, like, uh, he could have been used so much more, and then, like, he basically was established, and then they killed him. The other thing I was so upset about was freaking Lash. I, first of all, Blair Underwood, <laughs> hello, I love yeah. him. Why yeah. did you do that? And his uh, his dynamic with May it was, oh, it was so good. Ah, I hated that. I was like, well, great. Now you've killed off two people and just brushed it over and made Lincoln the one we're supposed to care about. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. I agree. And then <laughs> when, like, and how, the- how much would it suck if, like, they had killed, like, because I was terrified that they were going to kill Fitzsimmons. Like, one of them. Oh, one of them was going to take it. Yeah. When, when the freaking, like, little crucifix of, like, doom was being passed around from person to person, and then uh, Fitz got it, I was like, no! <laughs> I had that moment where I stood up and just yelled at the television. <laughs> but even, but see, like, even that, as much as I would never want to see him off the show, there would have been, like, a, like power in that, and, yeah. like, it would have been poignant, self-sacrificing, like, amazing, like, there would have been emotional investment in that, whereas this had zero emotional investment. Other than, other than getting uh, Daisy to this point of, like, rogue, like, quaking and both of the men that she had been involved in having died which i just i I was like "Ah." yeah and i i was like because i was watching um the marvel movies leading up to civil war and then i had saved some for right before civil war so i was like fully invested in both like the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the show's arc and like and then afterwards I was like watching and I was like yeah I gotta watch the finale and I watched it and I was like what the f- no <laughs> no <laughs> yep no <laughs> so, so I don't I think the, the the only thing good that came from this season was probably Fitzsimmons yes I love him <laughs> and because I don't even feel like we got enough of May. Because they were so focused of, on all the inhuman stuff. Like, we didn't get enough May. Yeah, I agree. So, next season, we need more May. 
Yeah, Calvary. Bring that guy Calvary, yo. Yep. And um, we, they need to touch on Coulson. And, like, supposedly Coulson's not director anymore because of that ending where they said that he's he's no longer director. Right. Which is so, smart. And you know what I think they should do is bring in Maria Hill. This is a great time for her to come in and be a regular. That's true. That's a good idea. I mean, in the comics, she becomes um, assistant director, I think. But she should totally be in there. She's amazing. Yeah. Unless they're planning on bringing her into the MCU, which they wouldn't in, they wouldn't in Doctor Strange. They wouldn't in Guardians 2, and they wouldn't in Thor Ragnarok. So the only way they could bring her in is if they did it in Spider-Man Homecoming. Which, well, doesn't, yeah. which doesn't really make sense. So I feel like S.H.I.E.L.D. would be the perfect place if studio and TV could get their act together and work together. Unless yeah. they bring her on to, like, Luke Cage or Jessica Jones and bring her into the Defenders realm, which I'm fine with, too. Because that would be a great crossover, and she could really play gritty, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think that that door is probably a little bit harder to open just because oh, yeah. of all the questions and stuff on no, that front. Not. I think all of the actors who are on the Netflix series are just as big as all the ones that are in the MCU proper. Yeah. Um, but, like, similar to how they brought in Sif on earlier episodes of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Well, Maria Hill's been on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She was in, yeah. uh, she was in season one. So yeah. they can bring her in super easy. Yeah. Back, you know, for a role. Like, even if it was just a couple arc to be on there to take the slack from Coulson or, like, although Mac is, Mac is director, right? Or was acting director? He was acting director, yeah. He got oh, yeah. Of his if it had been Mac, I would have been pissed. Oh, yeah. No, that would have been, because he's he's been built, his arc was really good this season. I think out of all of them, his was so great. And with the exit of Bobby and Hunter and her him being such good friends with them, it was so powerful when he, like, I was like. <laughs> yeah. First time I tried in that show, I was like, dear God, this show. <laughs> That's just living in my eye. Shut up. <laughs> that episode was such a killer. But so that, I mean, I think they need to bring them back for about? sure. Yeah. Somebody picks up Most Wanted, like, immediately. Yeah. One way or another. Oh, but God, that shield ending. Oh, sweet Jesus. Hi, huh, Rich has joined us. Rich. Rich. <laughs> Shield. Yes, he does. <laughs> oh God, that was oh oh. <laughs> and I loved him as a character. Who? Lincoln. Yes. See what? now, see now we have an opposing. <laughs> I love Lincoln. Rich, get in here, Rich. <laughs> oh God, here we go. Wait, wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're a big Lincoln fan, are you? I like Lincoln. He had his ups and okay, his downs, but, but he was—he redeemed himself. He did okay. it for love. Meh. Okay, but... Meh. <laughs> do you agree that he is not as poignant a death as Grant's character, uh, you know, slash Hive being, you know, Brett being off the show was not as big as... Or Lash, even. This is true. And they, they made Lincoln like the big death that we cared about, yet we didn't care about it as much as I feel like we should have. Or the fact that Lash died, who was amazing and way better than Lincoln. Blair Underwood's just a great actor, and he always has been. Thank you. I win. <laughs> <laughs> Which thing is rest her case. <laughs> you should have been a lawyer. <laughs> I would make a bad lawyer because I would just be like, okay, but but what about this? <laughs> but, okay, but what about this? <laughs> <laughs> and they would never win because I would just be like, I hear you, but I think you're wrong, and I say, what about this? <laughs> so what have I missed? What other ones have we discussed? That's all we've discussed That's so far. That's the only one we've gotten to because we were talking That's about fun. I've seen Rich, so they're they're doing it first for me so I can hop up and not be spoiled. Yes. So. Okay. And we're gonna let you go. And we're gonna talk about the rest of the shows. Thank you so much for joining and sharing your passionate views on Shield. Thank you for having me, friends. I am, if anything, very passionate. It was great <laughs> talking to you again. I was gonna say something else, and it, I don't know what happened. It came out weirdly. Oh no, we lost Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, no! Rachel, come back. Rachel, come um, back. We'll we'll have to schedule another call with you so we can all catch up. Oh yeah, that'd be lovely. Okay. All right, happy chatting, ladies and Rich. Yeah. Rich. Ooh. I'm here. <laughs> I'm breaking into this box. Oh, God. That's what you she ready? said. 
<laughs> oh, baby. Bye, Liz. Oh, Bye, baby. Bye, Liz. Oh, God.